Hi, in this video we'll go over some more examples of maximum likelihood estimation including the Poisson and uniform. So let's say that x1 through xn are IID samples from Poisson distribution with parameter theta. Let's say that we have these values. So what is the maximum likelihood estimate of theta? Well, uh, we want to find the likelihood of the data samples x given the parameter theta. So to do this, we take the product from i is equal to 1 over n of all the data points. So the probability of the data point sample xi given theta. So we can just plug in the Poisson probability mass function here to get this. So we want to find what value of theta maximizes this likelihood. But the problem is that this is actually pretty hard to differentiate. So to make it easier, let's take the log. And we can use these identities to help us. So again, the product becomes a sum, and when you multiply it, it becomes plus, divide becomes a minus if you log everything. And then the log of the first term is just the exponent, negative theta. The log of this theta to the xi is just xi log theta. And then we have the minus log of xi factorial. And if this was confusing, just pause it and try to use these formulas to derive this equation. Okay, so now we want to take the derivative of the log likelihood with respect to theta. So the derivative of the negative theta is just negative 1, and the derivative of log theta is just 1 over theta, so we have xi over theta. xi is a constant with respect to theta, remember? And now we want to uh, just set the derivative equal to 0 and solve for theta. So now when we're solving for theta, the theta hat is actually the estimate that we solve for. Okay, so do some algebra, so we get minus one repeated n times. If you add it all together, it's minus n. And then we can pull out the one over theta hat because it's a constant and it appears in every term in the sum. And then we get this. And solving for theta hat, we get one over n times the sum of the xi's, the sample mean. So we want to take the second derivative also because otherwise we don't know if this is a maximum or a minimum or just a saddle point or whatever. So let's take a second derivative to check. So let's differentiate this term again with respect to theta. So basically we have uh, just using the laws of differentiation, we have negative xi over a theta squared. And then we notice that because theta squared is always positive, so the negative of that is always negative. So therefore, the second derivative is always less than zero. So that means that it's concave down everywhere. Uh, the derivatives decrease. And if it's concave down everywhere, that means that any place where the derivative is zero is a global maximum. So we've successfully found the global maximum. Okay, now let's do another example, the uniform. So if x1 through xn are instead ID samples from a continuous uniform distribution from zero to theta, like this, then what is the MLE of theta? Uh, well, again, recall that the density of a uniform is one over theta times the indicator of x being between zero and theta. And notice that the indicator is one when x is between zero and theta, and it's zero if x is outside that range. So now, again, we write the likelihood of the data x given the parameter theta. So we take the product over all data points of the density at that data point, xi, given theta, and then plug in the density of the uniform here. Uh, and how do we simplify this? Well, first of all, we notice that in every term in the product, there is still this one over theta. So we multiply one over theta by itself n times. So we get one over theta to the n. And how do we multiply the indicators? Well, notice that the only way that the likelihood could be non-zero is if all the indicators are non-zero or all the indicators are one. So the only way that, because if even one of them was zero, then the whole likelihood would become zero. So the only way that all the indicators are not zero is if all the xi's are between zero and theta. Okay, so now let's take the derivative of this. And again, notice that the log likelihood is only non-zero when all the xi's are between zero and theta. So if that is the case, then the indicator is just one, so we can remove it. And the derivative of the left part, one over theta n, is just negative n over theta to the n plus one. And again, uh, if the indicator is zero, then the whole log likelihood is zero, so therefore the derivative is also zero. So therefore, if any of the xi's are not within the range, then the derivative should be zero. So that's why we can still add this indicator in here again. Now let's solve for theta, and we can set the derivative equal to zero and solve for theta, I mean. Uh, but then there seems to be no value of theta that solves this. What's going on? Uh, well, let's plot the graph. So uh, this is a graph of 1 over theta to the n. And notice that the likelihood, remember, was 1 over theta to the n times the indicator that all the xi's are between 0 and theta. So in other words, this can be written as the biggest xi still has to be less than or equal to theta. So theta has to be at least as large as the biggest xi. Because if it's not larger than the biggest xi, then it would have been impossible for that uniform to produce that larger xi. So therefore, uh, this likelihood is only non-zero when theta is bigger than all the xi's. So it's non-zero in this section, but it's zero if theta is less than the biggest xi. So therefore, the maximum likelihood estimate is just uh, the maximum of the xi's. Thank you.